Coming at you live from DNHQ in beautiful South Pasadena, California. Yes, this is 110 Studio LA, and this is the Blue Heaven Podcast. There's, there's a little lag. What is going on, Dodgers Nation? My name is Clint. You can find me as Real FRG on the Twitter and Instagram. That gentleman over there is DMAC underscore LA. He's still mourning a UCLA loss, wow. so drop some love in the chat. For D Mac, Doug, how you doing? Friday show, first time we've done a Friday live stream in a long time. It's a Friday show. It's, I needed this as a pick me up after yesterday's loss, but it's okay. Look, we have a lot to be excited about. Baseball season is right around the corner. The roster is essentially set at this point. The rotation is set. Lots of Dodgers news to get into, and that's what I love most. So the season is coming quick. So excited to have Dodger baseball basically next week. So it's next great. week, and hey, all all of the decisions are now done. Uh, the show started when we were putting it together as a final roster predictions. But, Nate, the final roster is set. Dave Roberts did it, so we're going to go through the roster. We're going to go through what the, the rotation looks like. We're going to go through what we think some of the problems could be for these Dodgers. And, hey, there's some uh, injury updates we got uh, today. The big news um, outside of James Outman getting the opening day uh, roster nod as Julio is going to get the opening day start. So a whole lot more on today's show. We're going to try to keep it quick. We're going to try to keep it tight because it is a Friday and uh, Noah wants to watch a nice slate of uh, NCAA games. But happy belated us. birthday to Mr. Noah as well. Yeah, happy. We, we gave him the, uh, the birthday love on the Monday show and he had himself a nice day at uh, Cracker Barrel. Did he actually? You said no, no, no. Oh, no. Cheesecake. Wow. cheesecake factory. Oh, you cheesecake. The <laughs> like, what cheesecake did you get? Which is Oreo, Oreo, Oreo nice. cheesecake. I like the s'mores one. That one's We're nice. clapping for it because we're idiots. But guys, let us know where you're repping Dodgers Nation tonight. Drop your area codes. We want to talk to you. Uh, get into this, uh, some of the comments here. Rebecca asking, "Why is Gavin Stone not on the roster?" Simply, he does not. He's not on the 40-man roster yet. But also, they don't quite need him yet. Uh, that's one way of putting it. Yeah, they need him. They could use him. He's lights out. But they want to give him a little more AAA seasoning, make sure that, uh, you know, clock doesn't strike midnight, I guess we could say. Yeah, you don't want to rush him through. I mean, he's a guy that's had so much success, a meteoric rise for Gavin Stone. But let's not forget, even though he was dominant at the AAA, AAA level, a 1-1-6 ERA in 23 and a third innings pitch, but that's 23 and a third innings pitch. Yeah. And he made it through high A ball all the way to AAA. Also, we know that for a fact he is going to get some run this season. He will make <laughs> his big league debut. But I think it's good to have him start the season at AAA, continue to refine his pitch mix, continue to throw that dominating changeup and that fastball, but also work in that curveball that he told us he was working on. So, yeah, there's a couple guys ahead of him right now. We'll see what they have in Ryan Pepio, see what they have in Andre Jackson. But you're going to see Gavin Stone at some point. So you don't need to rush him through. The most important thing is he's ready for the stretch run, and if he is going to be a weapon, be ready for the postseason. Yeah, that, that's the big thing about Gavin Stone is he is going to be the weapon. He is going to be the guy that... I don't envision this, but like, hey, a best case scenario, look at what happened in 2018. Dodgers needed a pitcher. They were able to plug in Walker Bueller, who took over for the rest of the season. And that's kind of what they hope happens with Gavin Stone. That does not happen often, if ever. I mean, the way Bueller kind of worked out was sort of, you know, once in a generation type thing. I mean, even Clayton Kershaw went back down to the minor leagues. So that's probably not going to happen with uh, with Gavin Stone, but that's the hope. He's the hope is he can be a guy who comes up, stays up, and pitches some very meaningful innings for the guy for a long time. A couple more in the comments here. Let's see. Alexander Z says D Mac and Clint are the goats, and we got crowns up there. Appreciate the Appreciate love, you, as Alex. always, Alex. Juice Narrow says can't wait to see the final roster baitions. Hey, there's no more roster baiting. You know, the the, the roster has come, if you will. So uh, <laughs> wow. it is it is here. Friday, uh, nasty shit. Anthony Keen says, sorry, D Mac, at least it was against the Zags. That made it worse, actually, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> no, no, no. 17 uh, years later. Doug, Doug came in very somber today. There is, guys. No, God. There is very, no God. If there is a God, he wants to torture UCLA basketball. That's it, all I got to say. It was, it was, it was, uh, it was a very sad man, as DJ producer Cody over there will tell you. Uh, Noah made sure to torture him. He did play yeah. USC's fight song, Tusk. Shout out Fleetwood Mac. Kick Can't wait to get them in here on the Kick show. Me while I'm down. <laughs> Can't wait to get Fleetwood Mac in here on Let's the show. Go. Michael Carrillo's predicting a 26 home run season for James Outman. That would be five. Uh, Kevin, not happy that Pepio got the number five spot. Kind of surprising on there. We'll dive into that in a second. Craig checking in from the 310. We always appreciate our friend Craig Osterberg. Um, let's see what else we got. What else we got? Uh, Adam818 says, I want real Dodger dogs back. So. We're going there. What you got? 
Uh, Michael Carrillo asked if you were going to stream uh, MLB 23, the show, this year, DMAC. Are we going to get a little DMAC versus Am Clint and MLB? I we mean, could. that'd be pretty fine. I kind of want to upgrade to a PS5 I got a PS5. Point. I'm going to bring but, it in. Yeah. You know what? I mean, John Boy does gaming, so I think that works. We could just, happen. We could just make gaming now. I don't, I don't really want to play that. Yeah. I would much rather play Wii Baseball. Mm. Wreck, now, that is... I would wreck your ass at Wii that Baseball, would be, bro. That would be that a side good... sidearm splitty. Uh, hey, how about yeah? That'd be I'd make awesome. you look as bad as Mike Trout did against Shohei Otani. I'm just saying, just throwing Ooh. it out there. Shout out Team Japan. Looking I really good. want to play with that then, for sure. <laughs> All right, we'll make that. How about some backyard some baseball too? <laughs> so, oh, oh, let's go. Uh, Roy Estrada, 702 Vegas is always betting on the Dodgers. Let's go, let's go. Um, Mario's asking who's throwing opening night. All right, that's a good jumping off point. Uh, let's get into the latest news that came out of Dodger camp today. Well, just after the Dodgers tie, which I really hate ties in spring training. I hate ties in general. It's boring. Victor Gonzalez, Michael Grove, option to triple a not necessarily surprising grove if grove threw together a a like great start on friday night while our our, on thursday night while your uh ucla team was getting destroyed um well at least your hopes were getting destroyed yeah um maybe it would have been a bit a bigger like shocker decision but no it made sense that it was going to go to ryan pepio so pepio is going to be the guy but yeah julio urias is your opening day starter uh any surprise about victor uh being an option out right now i would imagine no no surprise with victor i think that they're trying to search for what they had back in 2020 and so far he just has not been that guy is having command issues and you also have just better left-handed pitchers in front of him better options they found alex vesia in the dylan floro trade Caleb Ferguson is a guy that I don't think it's talked about enough no. because pure stuff wise velocity wise he's a guy that he made strides last season towards the end gave up some runs but he was running a long stretch of scoreless inning after scoreless inning so I think that really just no spot for him at this point also just too much of a liability I think he's a guy that's capable of giving up a big inning so they just don't really trust Victor Gonzalez yeah. at this point and yeah I mean if we're being completely honest to be frank a little concerned about the future of his career at the big league level especially in this organization where yeah. there's so much talent yeah if he could find a way to, to string together a nice couple of months at triple a this is a very thin bullpen as it is extremely thin bullpen it can, it will be better it will be have have the potential to be dominant by the time we look at july august but that is a long way away so yeah in reality they need victor to be good or to be around or to be available so if he does string together something maybe maybe he has a chance of coming back up to the big league level but i just i don't see it happening anytime uh anytime soon but yeah Julio named opening day starter. We knew this. We knew this for a while that that was going to happen. And he rewarded Dave with a pretty bad outing against the Brewers in uh, in Glendale, Arizona, or what do they call it? Swiftville for a little bit yeah. there, whatever. Tay Tay came in and took over about uh, took over. I mean, that has got to be just such a god awful come down, you know, to come from WBC. You're playing in in the semifinal game. You know, you lose on on the walk off. Well, not the walk off, but you lose. They lose the way they did. It was a walk off. You lose the way they did, uh, Team Mexico, and then to come back to forty six hundred people chilling at Glendale uh, in Glendale, Arizona, at Camelback Ranch. I mean, would you perform well in that situation? Yeah, I mean, you get those extra couple ticks of velocity with the adrenaline, and that's really all that Julio Urias knows. He's pitched with the Dodgers. He's pitched in the World Series. Got the final out in 2020. Like you said, he plays in the WBC, where he has ups and downs. He looked dominant to start, was flirting with those perfect innings, then gave up those home runs. But yeah, I think it was definitely a little come down. I think the most important thing for Julio is just getting stretched out, getting the feel out there. And we know that when those lights really turn on, he is going to be ready. So yeah, yeah I'm not overly concerned. I mean, you never know what guys are working on out there, too. I mean, the Pitch mix a little different, just the way they attack hitters, different quadrants of the zone. So I think Julio is going to be just fine. But it is a big year for him. And I think we'll kind of get into some Julio talk about just him being named the Dodgers opening day starter. And is this kind of a passing of the torch? Is he's a guy that is going to be the Dodgers ace for years to come? We'll find out. But I'm not concerned at all with his WC, WBC performance or his start today in spring training. Yeah. No, I mean, it's a good, it's a good note. You know, he didn't really – he had one, like a, a backfield – outing that we saw he had i think he pitched one cactus league game before taking off and and pitching just what three games for for team mexico in the wbc so 
there's uh, every every reason to expect or, or assume that he's working on something. But so don't be concerned about Julio Urias yet. Dustin May gets the number two spot in the rotation. Uh, splits up the left-handers, as Dave said, with Julio Urias and Clayton Kershaw. Do you like D May in that two hole? I like the fact that this is a guy who started an opening day in this career. He started by opening the way. day in 2020 after Kershaw was a late scratch, dude. His back barked Just in like there. Just like you, you got the Kershaw. I got the right Kershaw now. back. I need that epidural. But yeah, I do like the fact that when <laughs> that you epidural, <laughs> when you watch him, I mean, he's kind of a high variance player. I mean, if he's on, if he's <clears> commanding the zone, his stuff is second to none. But I think that giving him that two spot in the rotation, especially with Kershaw coming out of the gates like he is, it doesn't really matter. It's not a pride thing. Kershaw has accomplished everything, and I think getting Dustin May off to a good start this season is pivotal they need him to be a dude and i think that's kind of one of the big narratives the big storylines this season is kind of figuring out who are these dudes are they dudes or are they duds and i think may is a dude and i think that he's going to have a leap this year similar to what we saw with tony gonsolin i think that coming back from that tommy john surgery he told us in the clubhouse that his stuff <laughs> is the same as it was before the injury it's just a matter of throwing strikes and i think when he you saw him in his action last year comes back against the marlins he was dominant then he struggled against the padres gave all those home runs and the issue was Try, kind of the inner half against righties and throwing strikes yeah. consistently. As long as he does that, he's going to have success. So I like him in the two spot. I really do. I hear his stuff moves more than a oh. military family. It definitely. <laughs> that's, that's at least just what I've heard. No, uh, uh, Dustin talked uh, mid spring about it. Uh, you know, yeah, he barely made whatever it was his five, six starts last year. He'd been throwing the entire time. He had, at that point was basically up to a full season. His workload at that point. So, you know, the back gave out on him a little bit. He was fine. He was ready to go. He was ready to pitch in, in the postseason if needed. Never That opportunity, the phone never rang for him, but he had the, the best possible scenario. He came back. He pitched. He had some things go against him. He had some things go well, things he could work on, get, get to the offseason, rest your ass, then get back on it, uh, get back at it. So, yeah, this, this could be the – uh, the year we expected to see out of him in 21, the year he was starting in 21. This could be a very big year. And, hey, you know what? The Dodgers are giving him the the the, the ball and running with it. They're putting you in the number two spot. you got to prove that you earn that. He's not he's not 21 any, anymore, you know. We saw this guy come up as a kid. He's, uh, he's an elder boy now, sort of. Yeah, and we're seeing with this rotation, these decisions when it comes to their opening day <laughs> roster, that they are going to give a lot of runway to some of these younger guys, whether it be James Altman or Miguel Vargas. And not a lot of people have been talking about Dustin May as a part of the youth movement because it feels like he's been in this system for so long and he had success early on. But Dustin May is a guy who we were talking about, like we were talking about Gavin Stone and Bobby Miller at one point. He's a guy that, from a stuff standpoint, oh, yeah. we have to see, I think, with Dustin May, the big thing for me this year is, is he a true starter or is he? a guy that ends his career in the bullpen he has that three-quarter delivery it's kind of a violent delivery kind of lends itself to injuries but i think that he is going to have a big year i actually predict he's gonna make the all-star team oh there it is you heard it here first i think folks. dustin may i think we have dustin mania finally by the way those, that t-shirt company made a dustin mania shirt like Where's go my back royalties? you've been talking about this you came up with that in 2019 i'm pretty sure he, honest i was in the, in the hospital when he was born and i that's when we came up with dustin mania okay what? that day it was no i'm just playing he but he birthed Dustin May is what he's inferring. I believe. What was that? What was that one NSYNC thing? What was it? Maybe you can make that shirt. Oh, that one's a really long one, though. Oh, oh, one? oh, Dustin Timberlake. Dustin Timberlake. Dustin it's Tim gonna be May. Dustin Timberlake. Oh. It's gonna be May. That could be a shirt. But we no. have an It's gonna be May shirt in, in uh, Gear Up LA. Check it out. Or Gear Up. The deep in the archives. Gear up, get up. Gear Up LA. We haven't talked about it. Plug, for a while. plug. 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 If you buy the shirts, people will be happy. All right, number three guy, Clayton Kershaw. Getting older. Now, all of a sudden, the number three starter, not a problem to see him as the number three guy. I think you can do a lot worse than having a Hall of Famer starting the third game of the season against the Diamondbacks of all teams. Yeah, I mean, the story is pretty much the same with Clayton Kershaw as it was last year and the year before that. I think the encouraging signs this spring is he was hitting 93 with relative ease earlier. He came in a little more, more built up because he anticipated pitching in the WBC, but it's a pretty much a clear formula with him. Throw strikes, hit the zone, don't leave balls out over the middle of the plate, and be effective with that slider down in the zone. Yeah, I mean, like I always say, he's a happily married man, but he has a slide piece, and that slide piece is one of the best in the entire <laughs> sport so yeah he's throwing it more than the fastball he's really reinvented himself and i do like the fact that he's not 
He doesn't have an ego about him. I mean, some guys that are a walking Hall of Famer, a first ballot Hall of Famer, they would be the opening day starter until further notice. I like what like he said. Like a Scherzer type. Like a Scherzer type, yeah. exactly. A Max Scherzer, even a Verlander, even though <clears throat> they're, they're guys that, yeah, we're the pitchers of our generation. I loved what Kershaw said a few days ago when he said the opening day starter should be for whoever pitched the best the previous year. And he didn't really put any pressure on Julio Urias or the organization. And I think this guy just likes to go out there and perform. But, yeah, the biggest key for him is health. If you can get 20 to 24 starts, you're going to feel good about it. Anything close to 130 innings pitch. Yeah. But the reality is when he's out there on the mound, he's still a top 25 pitcher in the game. And the less we see of Clayton Kershaw, the more we likely see of Gavin Stone. So it's some, some relation there. Not necessarily in that order. But uh, Thor, Noah Syndergaard gets that number four spot. He's starting the, the fourth uh, game of the season. You know, an important year for this guy because this is the year that establishes whether or not he can return to being that dominant, maybe he can return to being Thor, or if he's just going to be a guy who's going to go out and get you 160 innings a year, be a, a quality, serviceable back end of the rotation type of guy. But not a wrong spot to put him because, hey, that means that opens the door for your number five guy to be our guy, the guy who furnishes your entire wardrobe, Ryan the Pep Pepio, which is a terrible name. Ryan Express, you came up with. Original baseball <laughs> Original name. Original baseball Original name. Original baseball name. Ryan Pepio, he talked about, uh, or he hasn't talked, we haven't heard from him yet, but officially named, just minutes before we went live, officially named the number five guy. You have to feel good for this kid. I mean, he he's put in the work. Uh, he he, What he told you in the offseason, like, hey, if I'm successful, if I'm in the strike zone, mitigate those walks. And the walks climbed a little bit in his last uh, his last start, but he looks good, and he looks like he's definitely earned this. This shouldn't, shouldn't be something where it, it, I don't think it's an imposter syndrome for him. He's ready for this. No, I absolutely agree. You can tell that he had a real quiet confidence about himself heading into this spring because he knew and handsome. The uh, yeah, got that the, show flow going. Yeah, the show flow. This thing breaking. I kind of it, I, when he ditched the stirrups, I was thinking maybe maybe he's trying to do something different. I think that he's really just taking a step. And I think last year there was a confidence issue out there on the mound as far as trusting his stuff. Now you see the confidence, and he's not trying to miss bats every single time. He's just trying to go out there and throw strikes. And look, everyone talks about Gavin Stone's changeable Pepio has another filthy changeup yeah. himself and look if you look at his numbers last season a 16.9 walk rate so far this spring that number's down to 9.8 percent he's striking out over 30 percent of opposing hitters in nine and a thirds innings pitch so he is getting the punch outs he is getting the swing and miss he is out there giving them innings and I think the biggest key for him is just kind of limiting big innings keeping the ball in the yard and I think too what I said a few days ago was look Ryan Pepio was going to be the guy because of the upside and yeah. the Dodgers in previous years maybe if you anticipate getting a Walker Bueller back earlier in the season if you have a little more depth and there's not as many questions with your rotation maybe you do go to a serviceable Michael Grove but they have to see what they have in Ryan Pepio yeah. that is what stage the Dodgers are in which guys are dudes is he going to be a guy for them because if he is he might not let go of this number five spot so it's a great opportunity for him yeah I mean his future is firmly in his hands even if Gonsolin, when he comes back and he's healthy and all that, yeah, he's probably not. Uh, Pepio is probably not going to take his spot immediately. Pepio, at some point in time, even if he's shoving, maybe if he's like just getting off to an all star type start or whatever, maybe yeah, they don't yeah. take him out. He's going to spend some time at AAA just because, For sure. well, one, they don't want him to throw 200 innings, but. Uh, Gonsolin's got to get in there at some point, but he's absolutely, Pepio is absolutely the guy who you wouldn't be terribly shocked if he somehow just hung around and threw 24, you know, starts this year or whatever. I mean, it would be kind of out of nowhere, but at the same time, wouldn't be, you know, no, he's good. Like we knew this was going to be a guy like with, with Grove, Grove solid. It's kind of a Mitch White. He's going to be the guy who comes up and down a whole bunch. But like we said, <laughs> RIP, exactly. But like we said for the last couple of weeks, if it's going to be a longer stretch of time where Gonsolin's out, where it's a few weeks, it's going to be Pepio, and, and uh, he's going to take it and run with it for sure. But that's your starting five. Let's get into some of the comments here because there's some good stuff in here. Michael Carrillo says we should trade Tony. He isn't worth his contract. I would argue against that. I would say he's very worth his contract if he can go out and duplicate what he did last year and be healthy for the full season which he's already kind of blown that but if he can be healthy all the way through that's a killer deal for both sides really 
Yeah, and they always say that you know how your organization feels about you by the type of contract <laughs> they sign you to. And with all those incentives, that incentive-laden contract that he signed, well, he was supposed to put up innings. And if he just replicated the success he had last season with, at the very least, 24 starts, I think you're definitely going to get some regression as far as the ERA will be closer to three than it is to two. But still, he doesn't have to be a number one, two, or three starter. That yeah. was never the expectation for Tony Gonsolin, is that he can go out there and be solid. And I think that the bit of information that he can pass along to some of these younger Dodger starters like a Dustin May or Ryan Pepio is no matter how good your stuff is, he has a elite split change as a unique pitch. We know Dustin May's stuff, Ryan Pepio's stuff is really good. You can't always miss bats. You have to trust your defense and you have to pitch to contact at times. And when you really surrender to that, you're able to control the zone better. So if he can go out there and throw strikes, that's the big thing for him. But yeah, I mean, look, you said on the last show, cats have nine lives. Well, he's at like seven or eight with Dodger fans when it comes to kind of the postseason woes, the injury woes. Yeah. Someone said in the comments last week, I believe, that it's always something with Tony Gonsolin. But look, the reality is, in his one full, he hasn't pitched a full season, and last year he was the closest he had ever been to a full season, and he was really good. So Really good, yeah. He's... He's earned at least this opportunity to stick around, and, and it's not like the Dodgers are flush with starting pitchers raring to go anyway, so I wouldn't trade uh, somebody who has put together a very recent, last year, all-star quality year. Um, yeah, and also, too, I mean, you're not going to want to trade a guy with 50 cents on the dollar, right? I yeah, mean, it's is, not like his value is at its peak. This is a good point. This is a great point. This is why he's the GM, guys. This guy. We have this, Friedman's number. It's in the media, guys. <laughs> Clint says we're gonna. Three I have, I've had it for years. Oh, uh, I don't call him. It's, it's weird. Mike Soldana says Chris Taylor hasn't earned a spot. I agree. The only thing that's keeping him on the roster, contract and options and all that other kind of stuff. Uh, Roy Estrada prediction: How many starters go down because of injury? I say three. If we're talking about starting pitchers, um, I don't know. I have some faith in in. The health. I mean, yeah, we might see at some point because I mean, I don't, I don't envision D May going out and throwing 200 innings, throwing 180 innings. So maybe there's kind of a phantom IL rest, there's a blister or something like that. Uh, I would say starters go down because of injury. It's like, what is the level? 15 day is okay, but if it's like gonna miss a month, like Gonsolin last year with the elbow, that's kind of a big thing. So three, I'll take the under. What do you got? Ah, uh, extended. I'm gonna say extended. Yeah, I think I would probably agree with you on that yeah. one, really. I mean, they're, they're, they use the Phantom IL as savvy as any organization. They don't want to burn guys into the ground until the wheels fall off. But I am pretty interested to see how they're going to use Hulu Arias this season, if I'm being quite honest, knowing that it could be his last season. So, yeah, I think... But for the most part, I think they're going to just want to keep guys healthy because they realize that that's the key and really having guys just peak in the postseason. Uh, Mike, Mike Seldon also said, uh, say Noah Syndergaard will be a 15 and 15, three ERA guy. I think that's solid. I mean, the 15 and 15 record is, I mean, I mean, it's kind of a lot of wins. It's also kind of a lot of losses. I don't know how he'd end up getting 30 decisions, but, um, if he can go and get, Syndergaard can go out and, you know, even get 13, be like 13 and, and six, that's, that's pretty damn good value, uh, for the amount of money they ended up giving him three ERA, three plus ERA. If it's three and a half, hell yeah, you take that. He's not going to probably not going to run out and post a, a two five or whatever, but, um, that's uh that'd this be, is my thoughts on it yeah that'd be pretty good i mean the issue with noah Syndergaard is 16.8 strikeout rate the lowest in his career but he's really in the process of reinventing himself if you're looking for love and thunder thor he's not walking through that door but he's also not going to be hollywood boulevard character actor thor either that's trying to work for tips okay he's going to be somewhere in between yeah. and i think the biggest key for him is accepting that that 98 99 100 mile per hour four seam fastball is not returning but the command has always been there last year a 5.5 percent walk rate he really commanded the zone and with that two seam fastball as long as he's locating and he has the movement you're going to get a lot of ground ball out so yeah i don't think you're going to have an elite cy young level thor but look he's in the middle of rotation for a dodgers team and he also was pretty dependable last season he appeared in 25 games made 24 starts yeah. coming off of tommy john surgery we know he wants to get a nice bag in the offseason he's going through this dodgers pitchers rehab with mark Pryor and company where yeah. they really get your career back on track 
but a three ERA, you would take that every single day and twice on Sunday. I think it's closer to four than three, but 3.94 wouldn't be terrible for this team. I mean, if it could be somewhere in the three, six range with dependability, I think that'd be just fine. Yeah, I mean, again, that's what you would pay for in that situation. He's doing his job to buy innings. That's all it is. So you don't have to run Gonsolin out there for 200 innings, which he's not going to hit. You don't have to do that the same with May. You don't need to do that with Kershaw because he's not going to get to 30 starts again in his career. And you don't need to run the kids out there with Pepio and, and Grove or Stone or anybody like that running them into the ground. Um, good talk on the rotation here. Diane's in the stream. So, so as, as people have noted, we can now officially start the stream. But I am behind in the comments as usual because that is what uh, we do when we start talking here. Uh, AJ Alexander agreeing. Thor, uh, where'd you go? Thor with 13 wins in the 3 5 area would be great. That'd be a big win for that contract. Sarah Morris's Thor will have or should have 10 plus wins. I mean, he's kind of at least last you know last year i guess we could really say he grew into or became a sort of pitch to contact guy i think he does start that way this season and then um starts trying to go for the k a little bit more starts trying to use the the four seam up in the zone and and uh you know i'm excited to see him work with barnes and will that's going to be uh where they find a way i think as he buys in more and more being with this organization, they find a way to, to, to maybe get him somewhere close back to, uh, to what he was before, but we're dragging on on the, the rotation. There's other stuff to talk about. Cause again, James Outman was named to the, uh, the opening day roster. That's huge for the kid friend of the show. Rock is going to be going to the show and that's important, but let's talk about the injuries. There are some little injury updates. Um, there's there's a few players I, I didn't end up finishing getting the numbers so this these are probably wrong but we have a few starting the season a few pitchers starting the season on the 15 day IL with of course Gonson where we talked about Daniel Hudson will not be ready so that's one reliever down Jimmy Nelson I think we talked about him last week if he ends up pitching for the Dodgers it would be a shock to me because the homeboy uh, homeboy has like the the most yippy of the yips um in all of recorded history 60 day il you have our our good close personal friend alex reyes who hopes to be back sometime around june Freaky. jp fire Eisen, who is a human being who exists has a very good arm but it's hurt and it's on its way back from surgery so hopefully he's a guy who's more um I don't know, August alongside yeah, potentially August. a September Bueller. Uh, and then, of course, Lux will be on the 60 day I IL at some point as, uh, as soon as they need a roster spot. But uh, did I miss anybody? I got Gonson, Hudson, Nelson. Who else is opening the season on the IL? I think that that's the main ones of the guys who will be available sooner rather than later. So, a little bit of update there. We already mentioned uh, um, Tony or Victor Gonzalez is going to be down to start the season so all of that pieces together to a 26 man rotation let us you take us through this 26 man rotation things you like about it things that are a concern for you so yeah i mean the pretty much the last the big decision was would james alvin make this team and if you look at this roster as it's made up you got will smith and asked austin barnes as the catchers infielders freddie freeman miguel vargas miguel rojas and max muncie so we'll start there i mean how are you feeling about this infield of course we have weeks now without gavin lux miguel rojas i think defensively it's uh it's a treat to watch him play it defense really it really is i mean it's so, so smooth so clean you can trust him especially like we've talked about with the restriction on the ship only question is offensively how close to league average will he get that's my big question his swing has looked better he has looked more healthy he's hitting the ball harder yeah. than he has in previous years so that's the big key and then also Miguel Vargas how is he going to handle this runway do you think Miggy's ready for this so the thing I, I wrote about uh, Vargas yesterday uh, the thing I like about Vargas is that he hasn't been a headline it's either you want to be a headline because you're showing out or stay completely out of the headlines. He's doing his job ever since. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it did, not including today's stats. He was in today's game. I don't know how he did. But um, ever since he was allowed to start swinging the bat, hitting a nice 280, few walks in there. You know, the on base is good. The the defense has looked pretty damn solid. You know, the thing that, that Dave Roberts mentioned uh, somewhere in the middle of spring training was, you know, he just wants – Var, or, yeah, Vargas to kind of work on his throws. It is a very yeah. different situation, as Gavin Lux talked to us about, too. It's a different situation when you're this close to the first baseman at second base and you're used to throwing from all the way across the diamond. So there's a little uh, uh, keys and, and um, 
triggers, I guess we'll say, that, that Victor's going to, uh, not Victor, Vargas is going to have to, I got Victor Gonzalez on the brain today, uh, Vargas is going to have to kind of get used to, will that change for him when the lights turn on? We don't know. It, it will be different when it's opening day, but I, I'm i I'm happy with what we're seeing so far out of uh, our, our good friend, Miguel Vargas. Yeah. Um, yeah, just just do your job. That's all you got to do. He's doing he's doing the right things, saying the right things. Love him. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Is that it does feel effortless. It feels like he's just going along with this process. Not only able to hit big league pitching, but also defensively. I yep. think Dave improving his throws. And we're kind of improving his feet positioning. That's kind of what Rojas was telling us. But the most important thing for me is that I think that athletically he can absolutely get the job done and also too when it comes to young players like a Miguel Vargas I always look for those things that you can't teach and one thing you can't teach is his bat to ball it's so impressive and I think that's going to play up for him and I think that's going to help avoid these big slumps these big droughts I mean you can't really take his spring training numbers seriously at 800 OPS but of course we know at the beginning like you said yeah. he couldn't swing the bat but he is profiling as one of those gap to gap double guys maybe you see him hit 20 plus home runs during a season but that's not going to be really his game but I think that he's perfectly suited for this second base role and I think one of the big silver linings with the Gavin Lux injury is you have Rojas really taking him under his wing as a keystone combination there at second base I think he's going to benefit heavily from that I'm not saying he wouldn't have played well with Gavin Lux mm -hmm. but to really throw two young guys into that situation I think that could have been yeah, a tall really, order really good point there and then, of course, Freddie, you don't want to talk about Freddie. Muncy, kind of want to get your thoughts real quick on Muncy. His swing looks I, better. I've said that I think he's going to be a 30-plus home run guy again. But what are your thoughts on Mad Max? I don't remember uh, I don't remember anything I say on the show ever. But I'm, I think I – did I call, like, a 40 home run season for Max? I don't I don't believe you was that Was that me? From what I remember, we all, like, were pretty high. Like, from – all. Like, I think I – I think I said his what's his um uh, 36 career high? Is his career high 36, 36. Yeah. I think somebody said 40 somebody said 38 mm -hmm. so we're all like in the same place. I don't know if it was like he's all of gonna us said be, something like that he's gonna be a guy that's that's the important thing we're saying with Max Muncy I really like what we're seeing out of Max Muncy you know he's he told you he told us he's feeling comfortable at third playing it before he used to say he hated the position but actually playing it uh, you know, he's got a good arm. He's, he's got some footwork there. Um, we know he's a, he's a gamer. He is a dude that is made out of dude who just loves this game. He loves to talk about the game, play the game, teach the game. And I think having him, like you're saying with, with Vargas, having, having, uh, you know, the Miguel's and then these, these two like sluggers on the corners with Freddie and, and Max, I mean, Really, that's what's going to carry this team because the outfield outside of of uh, Mookie gives me a, a good bit of frighten. <laughs> Yeah, and we'll talk about that right yeah. now. Let's talk but about this Max. outfield. Yeah, I think Max is going to have a, a really nice year. But if you look at the outfielders, of course, Mookie Betts, six-time Gold Glove Award winning. He's pretty good out here. He's pretty good. Solid. Into a double play there late. That didn't feel good. That kind of hurt in the Brought WBC championship. But Mookie's going to have himself a Momentum nice year. Killer. Nine, nine, <laughs> nine pounds of muscle this offseason, a career-high 35 home runs last year. So we know he's going to be in right field, but also he's going to be spelling Miguel Vargas at second base. You can see him at second base for possibly 20 games but other than that there is a lot of questions more questions than an episode of jeopardy i mean you got david peralta trace thompson james outman <laughs> jason hayward and chris taylor and i think we have to start with chris taylor i mean chris taylor is a guy that's dealt with injuries in the past he's a guy that the swing and miss the strikeout rate was extremely high what have you seen from him this spring and do you think he's going to have a bounce back here clint I mean, I'm not seeing anything that says bounce back. I'm not seeing anything that that screams I am comfortable doing my job uh, in the, in the batter's box. You know, you're going to get defense out of Chris Taylor. And honestly, I'm looking at CT uh, with with the addition of James Outman to the outfield. I'm looking at CT as kind of the primary backup infielder until he could play his way out of being that guy. Um, but it's tough to watch him try to hit right now. I know we know how he is. He's a very streaky hitter. He will find something at some point. I don't think this is, you know, the ultimate demise of Chris Taylor, but um, it's hard to, to really like what I'm seeing so far. Love the guy. Great guy. Been, been great to us this off season and all that. Um, but 
Yeah, I mean, he's been trying to find it at the plate for a good month now. And really, last season, his numbers weren't terribly bad. He didn't fall off a cliff. But 10 home runs, the power numbers were significantly down. I think you're seeing him punish mistakes left. I mean, less. I mean, in the yes, past, yes. there was something out of the plate, something he could drive. You're seeing him hit that. Now, he sometimes he looks a little mixed up, kind yeah. of swinging underneath I, stuff. I think it's a mechanical thing it, a little bit. A little mechanical tweak. Little, a good amount hands. of mental, too. Mental. But, but you, you would wonder about uh, when he's at his best, it's it's shoot the ball you know he wants to shoot the ball to right field he's kind of you know i mean he hopes he wants to be a sort of freddie freeman type but we can say with the bat he's not a freddie freeman with the bat yeah. for sure but he's gonna strike out a butt ton but he's also got to be able to make some contact here and then not have it go straight up or straight down yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think everyone always talked about Cody Bellinger with an all or nothing type swing. And we know that Chris Taylor has a violent swing. That is how he added power into his game. Look, I mean, Robert Van Skoyak is another guy that helped him with his swing, a little more uppercut. And yeah, it's a little more all or nothing, but you would kind of want to see him shorten that swing a little bit, yeah. make some adjustments. Many man, allow Dodge, more... many man five says uh, Taylor needs to cut a swing down by about 85%. 85%. I was He's out there daddy hacking. <laughs> Jeez, man, home run derby swinging. Yeah, I mean, I think for him, the biggest key, too, I mean, his numbers last season, if you look at him, how many of those games was he truly even close to being 100% healthy? Because he is such a gamer. He will play through injuries. You know what changed? Got married. That was he, what you were going to say? Yeah, he said he found Mary. Before, he was out there playing the field. He, he as as we've heard from friends in the, the clubhouse you know struggling to, to find the the lady folk even though he's a very handsome boy but he's a shy boy he misses the game he misses the chase hey i'm just kidding guys. don't hate the player he's married I'm to the game kidding. but yeah i mean look if you look Love at his Mary. numbers i mean still just a great human being for as much as he struck out last season still had a 93 wrc plus so his bat was only seven percent below league average yeah. but they hey, need he's more great slug. As, he's great as the fifth uh fifth infielder I'll tell you that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, you have Expensive to say that too. Expensive ass infielder, though. You know exactly. I mean, look, and you really here made... have a Snickers bar. <laughs> hey, hungry? Why wait? No. I don't, sorry. I'm yeah, distracted. but no, I distracted I, myself. I, I think too. It's like with Chris Taylor. He's a guy that you before Gavin Lux was injured early in the spring training is was he play, gonna play more shortstop now you're gonna see him at the shortstop position 20 percent of the time and I think defensively he's gonna provide that value but yeah it's definitely a concern when you look at the contract that he signed if he's below average once again that means that two of the four years halfway through the contract has you been a below average player and yeah I mean that's something I'm gonna be monitoring for sure some some comments here uh on CT in the chat uh 21 Eric underscore LA says wasn't he hurt most of last season yeah he was hurt fractured his foot but by now and, and he had the elbow thing he had the offseason elbow surgery and and when the, the the elbow thing happened he couldn't i brought that just for you Chief. i could not <laughs> i don't know why uh he he um he was unable to communicate with the team because of the lockout so that kind of the same like with max you know that threw off max so uh, um that's one thing he was hurt but now they say he's fully healthy he's ready to go Playing a lot of shortstop. Hopefully that locks him in because that is a position he want. Uh, he he wants to play. Our friend Sarah Morris says CT three needs confidence. He's he has made contact yesterday and today. He is showing a little bit of signs of maybe finding something, but I don't know. I'm I just I. I I have a hard time buying into it because he's they've, they've said that a lot over the last year of maybe a little less than a year with ct it's like yeah he's close he's found it he's real close to, to being right there um yeah when it starts to click for him you can see him go on a tear and then he'll fall into a slump i mean chris taylor is going to have stretches this season where he's on fire i mean that's just the guy he is if he's healthy and then you'll it's sometimes it's a timing thing a rhythm thing yeah. for chris taylor so i'm not overly concerned with him i think that if he struggles early, I think that could linger. I think he needs yes. to see some balls go out of the yard, get some, have some big moments. That's going to go a long way. Find some grass in general. Find Gra some grass. Find some grass or find some flan fan flesh with the baseball. With the, and yeah. Be good. And he'll be good. So, yeah, not, I'm not too concerned, but it's definitely something we are be closely monitoring. And then next, of course, David oh. Peralta. So they bring in David Peralta. And we know that surprising move. So at the time. pretty a surprise. I mean, late in the game, a late signing. And yeah, I mean, he'll be starting against right-handed pitching. And we know that 75% of the league is right-handed pitching. And he's a guy who, at least last season, he still was an above average bat. His bat to ball, his contact rates. But what are your thoughts on Peralta? Uh, we've, we've seen the kind of damage he can do to a baseball against this team. We saw it for a lot of years. Um, if, 
so if if James Altman didn't exist, I love Peralta being around, and I think Peralta is gonna gonna prove to be a decent signing. I I, I like what I'm seeing out of him. He had himself a when he was playing with Venezuela, he had a, a, a pretty good uh, like five for sixteen showing in the WBC. So. This is another guy who played with a bad team for a long time, didn't really get a chance to play under those lights too much, showed that he can kind of turn it on a little bit under lights, no matter what Chris Russo says about oh, wow. the, the value of the WBC and what the, the games and at-bats mean. Um, I like Peralta. I like Peralta more than I like, uh, as no shock to anybody, Trace Thompson this season. I, I like what DP can do um, for this uh, for this roster and, and adding some, you know, veteran presence to the outfield yeah and the thing with Peralta is he's a proven big leaguer at this point he's not going to be that 30 home run guy that we saw in 2018 but I think that you can say a pretty full confidence that he is going to have success against righties and at the very least be close to being average now ideally you see him hit for a little more power and strike out a little less because his strikeout numbers were up last season. He's got season. a big swing. He's got though. a pretty big swing. Yeah. And Look, that's, at, to me, last season's kind of an outlier, though. He yeah. talked about it. he had the, the the back issue. It didn't help him going that's and true, playing yeah. on the turf in, in, uh, in Tampa Bay. Uh, he mentioned he played on the turf there in Miami. He didn't hurt him playing uh, with, you know, the, the, the uh, I think it was a herniated disc in his back. So, as somebody currently dealing with back issues, imagine yeah. trying to swing a baseball bat. I'm just saying. No, you know, absolutely. I, the confidence in him is a lot higher. For me, the, my confidence in Peralta is a lot higher than Thompson or in CT at the moment. Yeah, and then let's talk about Trace Thompson, because really you would think that he's the incumbent in center field. He started all four of the Dodgers games against the Padres in the NLDS, but it looks like he is regressing, and he's regressing very quickly here. I mean, any thoughts on him? I mean, you were one of the first guys that I saw said, hey, it could be an early DFA candidate. I said this months ago, and uh, the I, I uh, my dude turned into a pumpkin. I, I, I fear... The pumpkin reality is here, and I don't think Prince Charming's coming to looking, coming to looking to put the no shoe on his foot. Yeah. Name the movie. No. Um, my, I'll still stand, uh, stand behind saying like I don't know if he makes it out of April. I just really don't know. And it's also a good part of it is he. He's kind of, he's a redundancy on this team. If if they're going with Outman, if Outman comes out and and hits well, uh, they're going to need to find a way to create a little more versatility with with the roster with the team. And I just don't see where they get a lot of playing time for Trace Thompson. Yeah, I mean, it definitely felt like a summer fling last year, and the Dodgers basically made a serious relationship with the summer fling in Trace Thompson because he hope was I'm fantastic wrong. in the summer. And, yeah, I hope I'm wrong, too. I mean, if he can be the guy that had a 142 WRC+, plus, hit 13 bombs, punished mistakes, that'd be great. But if you look at his stretch from September to October, his last 24 games, he hit 208 with 34 strikeouts and 72 at-bats. In the postseason, he went 2 for 13 with 6 strikeouts. So we're talking about a 47% strikeout rate for Trace Thompson. And he really has to prove that he can hit lefties. Because if we're early in the season and he can't hit lefties, he's not going to provide a lot of value for this team. And that's why I was saying that, hey, if you're going to try to maybe include him in a trade for... Isaiah kind of for Lafa. I like the Another idea of that spot, one or yeah. just anybody who I could right, just make more sense over the next week. People, I mean, we're just seeing some guys getting, getting cut, getting, you know, uh, released. We saw our good friend, Charlie Culberson getting released from Tampa Bay today. Um, rosters are going to be moving at this little weird nexus of, of just before opening day, a week before opening day. So if something could happen. I, I don't see it happening though. I think what we see is what we're going to get. Dave Roberts already talked about how he really likes the, the versatility and the optionality and all the Dave isms about this roster. He said, you know, verse left verse, right. I like what we have. And that includes Trace Thompson. Yeah. And you know that there is also just kind of a loyalty, a connection. Of course, his relationship with his team is very popular in the clubhouse. And look, they're going to give him that opportunity early on to see if he can be that guy. But I also yeah. think they're not going to give him a long leash. And next, we're going to talk about Jason Hayward. Now, Jason Hayward, he's the guy that he showed early on in the spring that, hey, that swing was better. He looked like he unlocked some things. And then he's regressed to being a 200 hitter. Yeah. And that's what he's been for quite some time. I mean, are you expecting anything from Hayward this season well uh, I mean yes I'm expecting him to be the the fourth fifth outfielder 
four and a half outfielder, whatever you want to call him, for the first uh, at least probably month of the season. I think he's bought himself as not, as much time as as Thompson. Um, I I I don't know. I I. Uh, I want to buy in on everything because the story is fun. He's a, he's a good dude. He's a great defender. Um, but we, we've seen just a little bit too much up and down. And I think that's the, the swing change is it's too, it's too conducive to, to getting beat, to, to the league adjusting on him, the way you know, he's kind of setting up, uh, at least the early – swing we saw that you know hit 400 over the first few games we saw that the league adjusted to it pretty quick and i don't know if he's been able to catch up to fastballs you know he did have a nice game against chicago but um it doesn't look great it doesn't look bad he looks fine to not be a starting center fielder which at one point i was like hey this guy could be the starting center fielder on opening day maybe if things just go a certain way but yeah, and then you talk about those redundancies, right? If Trace is hitting, having the reverse splits with James Altman also being a lefty, Jason Hayward, if he's not providing a pop off the bench, does he really provide a lot of value? Yeah. Would he be on this team if Freddie Freeman wasn't on this team? That's another thing. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's a great veteran presence, and I think that it would be great for him to have a resurgent season with the Dodgers and get back on track. But, yeah, I mean, there's really nothing that points to him having a really good year. So if you just kind of do this recap, we'll talk to James about James Altman at the end here. Mookie Betts, we can trust is going to be an all-star caliber outfielder. But David Peralta, maybe league average. Trace Thompson, most likely below league average. Jason Hayward, league average at best. At best. Chris Taylor, hopefully gets back to league average. So this, this outfield, lots of questions. But James Outman, is he going to be the savior? Because I see people out there saying, oh, James Outman, he made the opening day roster. That was a great decision. As if the Dodgers are giving him an opportunity. No, the Dodgers need production they from really James do. Outman. They, they really need him do. to be a plus bat. But do you think he can step into that role? I hope. I really hope he can. Um the kid's got the tools. He's got the pop. He has nothing left to prove at AAA like we've talked about the last couple of weeks. You know, I, I think I think he's somebody who plays better without all the, the spotlight on him because, you know, you, you unearth the great secret of Raka, the coffee-drinking rock, his source of power, and then everybody started asking him about his rock, and then he got a lot of, you know, people shining lights and cameras in his face about this rock. Now, uh, you know, Rocket got tired, needs more coffee. Rocket needs an agent. Rocket needs an agent. Uh, BSing aside, I, I do think um, it, this is a year of Trace, uh, Trace Thompson. This is a year of James Outman. He, he, he's not just being given this role. He earned this role. He earned this opportunity to hopefully knock on desk here, be the opening day starter. Yeah, I, I don't know why you would put somebody else in there. Depending, I mean, if it's a left-hander, which it's not, it's Zach Gallen. So he's he should be your opening day center fielder. Let him eat. Let it have fun. Let him throw somebody out and have himself a good time and just carry the momentum from there. But uh, it's it's the year of James Alman. Yeah, and we saw it got off to a pretty nice start. Then kind of struggled for a couple of games there. Then kind of got back <laughs> on track. But yeah, there's always. Dodger fans out there that are trying to make his strikeout rate to be something. Yes, it's at 36% during spring training, and you want to lower that number. But look at Schwarber. Look at Eugenio Suarez, guys like that. They're still well above average, and they're still in the 30 percentile, or in the 30s when it comes to strikeout rate. So you can strike out and still be productive, but he's a guy that has to go up there and be a run producer and to do damage. And also, the reason why I was such a big advocate for him making that opening day roster is you have to see what you have in him earlier in the year because if yes. he can't be a dude for you if he can't at the very least be a guy that you can maybe get 20 plus home runs from if you get 400 plate appearances something like that i do think they have to explore the trade market to yeah. improve their products from the outfield sooner, standpoint the sooner they know the sooner they can identify needs before july Exactly. And that is what has to be the plan. If they're going to go all in on this season, there's just, if you look around this diamond, you can trust some of the guys we've talked about, but the outfield leaves a lot to be desired. And I think James Outman, we'll see. I think there's a little bit of pressure on him now because he's really become this mythical figure, but I do think that he's going to hit the ball hard. I think he's going to go through his slumps and have some rough patches at times, but I'm excited to see what he's capable of doing because let's not forget, Cody Bellinger set the bar very low offensively, and we know this organization Organization, they still value defense, and he's going to be a plus defender. There's no doubt about that. I agree. How many home runs? Over or under 20? 
But we had somebody say 26. 26. I'm going I'm to take the over. I am going to take the over on 20. I think he's got some pop in him. Hit 31 bombs last year at AAA, bombs. you know? Yeah, that I'm going Bomba show. Yeah, 20. So we got uh, over 20. I, I think he hits. Um, let's go even number 25. I think right. 25, that'd be big. Give me 24 bombs then. 24, you're going to go. Right. Okay. I got Alvin hitting 25. My man, Clint's Book got it. 24. Yeah. All I right. Think, uh, yeah. But I, I think he's absolutely a necessity at this point. That's kind of the point I'm trying to make is this is an opportunity for him, but also this is a guy that turns 26 in May. So they need him to have some success. He also, you know, drafted out of college, so it's seventh like, round pick. I mean, he's a little older, but it's also like he's the long. He's not just been dwelling. The Tom Brady of of baseball, apparently, according yeah. to to Douglas McCain. I never yeah, said that, but I said that Tom Brady is another late person. round draft pick. That's a chip on his shoulder. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Tom Brady, book it, Hall of they Fame both went career. To high school where he had ninety three tackles. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, if you look at this roster. It's a roster that's absolutely up there with some of the best in the league. I think the uh, roster, kind of the point today, this roster is going to look different after the trade deadline. This roster is going to look different come the postseason. I would strongly disagree with the idea that it's one of the up there with one of the best in the league. I don't. I, this is a very mid position player roster in my opinion, but. You know, I, I mean, it's also coming off a season where they had, you know, just Trey Turner there chilling. Cody Bellinger, who they hoped would be, you know, still at least carry the MVP pedigree with him. Um, and the year before, you had, you know, a World Series MVP and Corey Seager as your shortstop. You had Justin Turner in the lineup for 10 years. Now we just, there, there's, there's random bodies and names and, and dudes that need to establish themselves, particularly with, with Vargas and Outman. Um, I'm not a massive fan of the roster. I think it's it's not questionable. It's intriguing, but I don't think it's the greatest roster you're going to see out there. And I don't think it's a top. I don't even think it's a top ten roster to be honest. Really, I would definitely disagree with you on that point. I think that we've become a little jaded when you oh, look yeah. at this roster. Oh, yeah, I maybe. mean, think about the 2017 team. You didn't have any of that upper echelon top five, ten talent. This team has Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts. No, in 17, ten. you had Bellinger, you had Seager, you had the legendary Austin Barnes. But those aren't top ten players. I mean, even that season, they weren't top ten yeah. players. I mean. Freddie Freeman is a bona fide MVP candidate. I mean, Seager okay, maybe, is best maybe, here. Maybe not a top 10 is a bit too much. I, it, it, I mean, I love that. 2017 is my favorite team of all time. Top seven offense is what I'm looking at right now. Top seven a position player uh, roster is what I'm looking at right now. Top seven. That sounds kind of fair. I think you look at the NL East and the Braves and the and the Mets and the Padres, of course, in the NL West. I still think we look at the talent of this team. It just depends on a lot of things. If you're going to get a bounce back year from Max Muncy and All Star year, that's, that that's changes a massive, things. And JD Martinez, yeah. we haven't even talked about yet as a designated hitter. He's a guy who his power numbers have gone down. He's had some home run droughts, and he's another guy that's not punishing mistakes like we've seen in the past. Is he one of the best pure hitters in the game at this point? I think he's looking to prove that once again this season. So if he's a guy that looks the part and is more like the JD Martinez. Martinez from 2019 that also changes the conversation if James Alman is a guy that can be in the rookie of the year mix along with Miguel Vargas if yeah. he can live up to his potential so you can't really say with full confidence that this team is unequivocally a, an elite team but there are there's a lot of potential in this roster and you still have we haven't mentioned Will Smith yeah, who say, is the best hitting the, catch the, in the, the league the keys are you know what you're going to get out of Mookie and out of Freddie it's it's is Will going to take that next next step because he had a good year last year but it was a little bit of a step back from 21 so if he, can he take that next progression forward and solidify himself as the guy? Hey, this is a guy that Dave says is going to hit third for this lineup. And he's a catcher. He's not going to be in there every day. We know this. But there's a lot riding on this dude for sure. Um, and then so much riding on the the idea that Max Muncy could return to that all-star form. This There's just there's so many question marks, and that's what gives me a, a hard time saying, like, yeah, I'm all in on it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not completely all in on this team is going to win the World Series or anything like that. I think they're going to have as good of a chance early in the year to have one of the best records in the league because we know the Dodgers have the formula to win the regular season. And 
vie for that division championship. But I do think my prediction is this team is going to run out these guys they have. They're going to see from a run production standpoint what they have. And if they're going to bolster, they're going to do it in the outfield. My prediction is they will trade yes. for an upgraded bat in the outfield because there's not big shortstop names out there. Willie Adamas most likely it's is not, not going to happen. Even Willie Adamas offensively. <laughs> put that pipe dream to, to rest for yeah, sure. Yeah, put that pipe dream. And I also think they trust Rojas defensively. Yeah. So and I you're would not going to see Tim Tim Anderson. You're not going to see those type of dudes. Yeah, and honestly, those guys, even though they're good hitters, they're still not going to... I think they need another slugger, if anything. That's what they would be looking at. I think, look, Brian Reynolds is a guy, lots of years of team control left. They would have to give up a lot for him. But if they truly believe this is a World Series contending team, they're going to have to add another bat at some point during this season. But look, you always have to remember, there's a lot of talent on this team. If they signed Freddie Freeman last offseason you'd feel good about it. If they sign Mookie Betts, and those are still two of the best players. Yeah. They stay healthy. Will Smith emerges. Max Muncy has a bounce back here. J.D. Martinez, there's still so much. I, feel, I sound like that Freddie Freeman thing. Where he's like, I still name All-Star, All-Star All -Star on this uh, team and uh, this and that. So yeah, yeah, I mean, anything that helps you sleep at night, you know? Uh, <laughs> after that, you say, last one, I'll be sleeping for like a month. Bruh. But yeah, I mean, I mean there's your position player side of things. You know, you talked a little bit about JD and, and I agree with what you say. Like there, there's a lot riding on JD where he needs to get back to being just dingers or even just doubles. He needs to be a consistent run producer in that five or six hole, most likely in the five hole in, in the lineup. He ain't fast. He's not going to provide you any, any, um, uh, value on defense anywhere, but if he can get into a spot where he's hitting, um, and teach helping the kids, you know, somebody like Miguel Vargas, who's already kind of turned to him uh, as as a mentor in in uh, in the hitting side of things. If he could be that guy, if he could be the unofficial coach on there and and provide uh, some pop, doesn't need to be an all star. He just needs to provide some pop, stay healthy, provide some pop. Yeah, for sure. We got some comments in here. Diane Schroeder says, I'm going to go 20 plus on Outman. Mike Saldana agrees with you. You didn't say this roster is weak, but Mike Saldana said this roster is weak. Sarah Moore says, no, it's an average roster. I don't know how you can say it's an average roster. You're saying this, this is the 15th best roster in Major League Baseball. I mean, look at the the win, the Pakoda and everything like that. I mean, this team is still yeah, right no, in the mix I mean, the, to be a World Series contender. There's, there's, the projections do give it some love, but there's just, I don't know, there's... I think it's it's such a seismic shift uh, from what we've seen over the last five years and uh, how much things have changed over that time. I don't love it, but I'll I, you know I can learn to love it. I think there's they there's have a lot dubs. to prove. They have to win you over, and I yes. think that you can't. I, I like to be very Mitch Law to have full optimistic, but still, I mean, we're gonna need to see something and re real results early on to truly assess what this team is. But the talent is there and the potential is there, and I think that this year you're gonna get the young guys emerge. But we got uh, roster of Team Canada was better from Mike Saldana, <laughs> Craig Osterberg predicting 95 wins, Sermon King. I agree with you. Never lose faith in Friedman. He'll upgrade the roster as he sees fit in the as the season goes on. Yeah, that's the thing too. You give your the flexibility of making a move but then i think the big question there is do they see the golden goose at the end of the tunnel in shohei otani how active will they be if they think that it could risk that at any point so that's yep. kind of the big question i have but i still see this team competing for a world series and going all in on a world series and being aggressive and i think the fact that they're still willing to absorb salary and not try to shed salary it lets you know that this team is still committed to winning another ring they want them dubs you want Remember, them dubs. mookie said rings he's here Plural. for rings jd martinez says he's here to win a title this is a team that wants to win they got 85 some pieces, win roster but uh i mean to win 85 i wouldn't be terribly surprised if they win 86 is the if, magic number if remember they win hey, this is true this is your number if they if also if they win like 104 i wouldn't be terribly surprised there's just so much on this scale should we that, throw out uh, our uh, win predictions yet? No, Monday. For Monday. Monday, for Monday is going to be the win predictions. Monday. We're already going. I already owe Cody a lot of money because we said this is going to be a 45-minute show, and we're at like 57 on, on the live time. So it's we're having good a good us. time with you guys. This is fair. Um, so there's your position player side of things. I do want to talk. Uh, I know we want to talk a bit about the – the, the pitching side of things because the the, the 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 entire pitching staff is now set we already talked about the starting rotation I don't think there's any any major questions to add to that but let's dive into the relievers and I want to hear you talk about about the, the the core of relievers here starting at the top with Evan Phillips 
Yeah, Evan Phillips, of course, established himself as one of the best relievers in the game. But I will caution that with, hey, relievers are volatile from year to year. You just never know what you're going to get. Brandon Morrow, we've seen examples of guys not having it the very next season. But I think he's a guy that is going to have a great season. Now, I think not having an established closer and knowing that he is going to be a guy that could get more saves this year is going to be interesting to see because, yeah, he definitely looked good when he was a closer, but they need to use him in those high leverage situations Alex Vesia the top left-handed reliever coming out of the pen Yancy Almonte he's a guy that was another breakout discovery by the Dodgers Yancy Almonte Bruce Dar Gratterall what are your thoughts on Bruce Dar your friend I don't know if you guys seen the clip of hey Bruce Dar que paso <laughs> that's a good song <laughs> um this is a this is a big year for uh, the bazooka man because he's been he's been solid over his Dodger career but he usually, you know, coming in sixth, seventh, eighth, whenever, like, they, they, they've they babied him in a way where, yeah, I mean, he's faced some of the best hitters. He's faced Tatis and Machado in the biggest situations, but they also would prefer to kind of have him maybe throw against the seven, eight, nine guys or, you know, whatever numbers come before that because I'm not good at math, but he needs the, they want him to get that slider. Dave talked about him needing to throw one more slower pitch, have the, the velocity differential. And that will really be the equalizer for him. You know, the cutter helped him a lot against left-handers uh, last year in particular, he had a good season. Um, but this is a guy who, I mean, realistically, you look back at what, what we had, what we saw in him uh, in his first year as a Dodger in 2010, 2020, you would assume he would be the closer by now. And they wouldn't have traded, <laughs> gone out and traded for Craig Kimbrell. But instead, um, he's not. He hasn't been able to earn that job because he still doesn't have the strikeout ball, which I don't know. I don't care as much about the strikeout ball all the time because I think if you're getting outs, you're getting outs. But I understand why you want a closer who can uh, earn some strikeouts. But if he can uh, keep the shape of that slider, maybe he doesn't need to go out there and throw 101 with every pitch. Maybe if he brings it down to a nice 98 with a good, consistent, sharp slider, uh, that just brings him to another level. Yeah, no, all great points. I think that slider is so key to his success and his future, really. I mean, if you look at the slider in 2021, he threw it just over 7% of the time. Last year, that number jumped up to 19.3%. He threw the sinker significantly less. So clearly the game plan, the, the progression for him is, to make it, is diversifying that pitch mix. It is throwing more off speed, and that's going to keep the hitters off balance. He doesn't have a great extension, and that's no. another reason why that 100-mile-per-hour fastball doesn't play up as much yes yeah. it's triple digit heat but he also pitches to contact he also throws it as a two seam so you're getting those ground ball out so and, and that that short arm throw is not conducive to a consistent slider just plainly not that's why he has he has a he's exactly. a quality cutter but it's they're not going to get that because you need that little more you know extension out away from yourself to to be able to shape the ball better and that's something he mentioned earlier this week um is there he needs to be able to shape the ball more consistently get that that slider shape on it and, and it's just been if you know if you're trying to get that yeah you're probably changing your arm slot and then now you're just telegraphing your pitch and you're going to get you know donged all over the place yeah no I, I exactly i think the thing with waiting uh, for it there you go i think with bruise dark friday you just have to have some experimental <laughs> growing pains with him and have him actually use it in the game and just live with the results because he's not going to yeah. be able to make strides unless you're really changing things up so bruise dark of course he's a guy that he's going to be in higher leverage situations with no defined closer with daniel hudson out early in the year so we'll see if yeah, he can stay healthy as well he's dealing with need injury to stay healthy issues and, and they need to stay uh on the field because there is nobody ready to go um in the minor leagues if any of these relievers get hurt at all there's nobody unless they're bringing up michael grove who's not a reliever victor gonzalez not good yeah justin brule not terribly good they're thin it's like very single, thin single ply to toilet paper single ply toilet paper yeah thin. this is this is the worst of the worst uh, you know uh, truck stop gas station toilet paper right here it's thin and then of course you got we talked a little about earlier caleb ferguson another lefty i think upside right wise Ferg, yeah. talent wise raw stuff he's gonna be a guy that the dodgers are gonna have to lean on and then shelby miller is another big question eight strikeouts and in five innings of work it's given up five runs in five innings a nine era the dodgers of course signed that 1.5 million dollar deal a big league contract and they like him for the strikeouts but so far the early returns haven't been good 
Don't 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 buy a dollar worth of stock on Shelby Miller, guys. It's not he, if, time. He, if he does something, man, that'd be a shock. But it's just it's not gonna happen. Dollar dollar stocks. Yeah, I, already I owe you, you like, on Shelby hey, Miller. I, I owe you like twenty seven stocks. Thousand. That's that's pretty good odds, guys. <laughs> so yeah, I he, would invest. <laughs> there we go. But he is going to be on that big league roster, and we'll see if he, the light turns on for him. Because Austin Barnes, he told us he really liked his stuff. He's a guy that we should keep our eyes on. And we know the Dodgers, they signed for reason. Got a good comment? Nando nah, 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 390 says it's not even toilet paper. It's just straight up not wiping. <laughs> just. <laughs> wow. What you know? What you know about creamy tro- uh, droves? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Take off your socks and wipe. Hey, hey, it might do a better Take job a than uh, that no ply TP. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Friday Uh-oh. shows are the best. Okay. Man. Then, of course, Phil Bigford. So, Bigford, four runs in six and a third innings, a 5 6 ERA. I think for me, Phil Bigford, the. A couple things that really stand out are, one, he is not going to be in high leverage situations. You need a rubber arm at that part of your bullpen that can do mop-up duty. You can throw him in multiple nights. He can pitch four times a week if you need him. Let's not forget. Doesn't have minor league options. Does have minor league options. (laughs) He was second only behind Kimbrell last year in appearances and games appeared. So, yeah, uh, I think Phil Bigford is a guy that hopefully he can have more success than he did last year. I mean, yeah. I mean. Same. I hope I, I hope I too can have better success last year than last Ditto. year. Ditto. Right? I mean, he's the last guy in your bullpen too. So let's longtime fans of the show will know we've been through some things. I will say he's <laughs> right, him and Dustin May the two best show flows on the team. Oh yeah, but you know that don't win ball games, bruh. Yeah, I mean, but <laughs> still, I think when you look at the depth, he's the right guy. And of course, Andre. Man, does this bullpen just fall off? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Bigford's a rubber arm, I'm telling you. It's, for him, it's just about location. His stuff definitely has... Yeah, it was parked uh, about 400 feet from uh, off of Albert Pujols' bat. That's that's his uh, usual location. I mess with Spicoli. B- hey, yeah, it's, it's, it's BP... Uh, it's BPPB. Look, Bigford, I think, is a guy that... Uh, we'll it's not see. a good name. But then we got Don't Andre worry. Jackson. So one of the big stories today was that Andre Jackson, he has made this opening day roster... <laughs> Last season, he was very effective in his limited duty in the show at 117 ERA, 10 punch outs to one walk. Or actually, that's a spring training action. Yeah, yeah. 117, 10 punches to one walk and seven and two thirds. God awful at the minor league level. Figured some things out mentally, which what he talked about in the off season. I like I like uh, I like Andre in this in this role particular because he's built up to to throw some innings, which his team is going to need early in the season. So, I hope. I knock on desk again that he can stay on this roster. Yeah, and I think he provides value, like you said. He's a guy that Dave said could throw 75 pitches. He has experience. And look, he was effective in the show last season. In nine and two-thirds, a one eight six ERA. Got that three-inning save when the Dodgers set the record for most wins. And yeah, I think he's a guy that's just kind of sick and tired of pitching at the AAA level, and that was also a part of it. But if you look at his stuff, no one talks about his changeup, but that's going to play up. His velocity averaging over 95 miles per hour. So I think he's a guy that's going to embrace this role and we'll see if he can get it done as a long man out of the pen. The uh, the comments are talking about hey, this is the new uh, the new Ross Stripling. Michael Carrillo says that and he says we get a new version of Ross Stripling every year. <laughs> I mean, you know my facts. I mean, from <laughs> Ross Stripling to Mitch White to now Andre Jackson, and who knows when everyone gets healthy, it could be Ryan Pepe after that. I mean, you just Grover. Uh, yeah. Grove is a guy. Look, I mean, the thing is, I think from a pure talent perspective, Andre Jackson, what we've seen, it's about just being out, being solid. And he's a guy that's capable of doing just that. So there's, there's your bullpen. Like, look, you just listed out those names and you could feel that that the tone of our show very much dipped as we got deeper into the the, the throws of of these parts of, 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 of the roster and pitching side and, and the position player side. So I ask you one biggest concern. I kind of, I think I already laid mine out because to me, a biggest concern is a bullpen, but also as the outfield. So I'm going to use the outfield part as, as mine. What is your biggest concern 
uh, for this roster heading into opening day, knowing full well that this is not the team we're going to see in October if they make it. Which so as will. far the way I look at it is I look at the big picture. I look at the World Series and the postseason, and we know, look at last year. This bullpen, they needed a piece. They went out there and got Chris Martin, and he was dominant, right? The outfield, I think I agree with that, but I'm not going to say that one because you did. And that's another – you can go out there and find a bat. To me, I still look at the starting rotation as if I'm thinking of the World Series – Kershaw's injury history. Dustin May's unproven. Ryan Pepio's unproven. Noah Syndergaard, is he going to be a number one or two or three in a World Series winning team? Tony Gonsolin's injury issues. I still look at that starting rotation. Now, do we address that internally and Gavin Stone comes up and he becomes a dude? Does Walker Buehler come back and he provide multiple innings of work out of that pen and be a guy that can be lights out late in games and high leverage situations? Yes, that's possible. But I think that if I look at long term, yes, the offense is going to take a dip because you lose Trey Turner and Gavin Lux of course he's injured out for the season and they need some more depth in the outfield and some more pop in those bats but the bullpen once they get Daniel Hudson back you get a little more stability yeah. Evan Phillips once I see Evan Phillips and I realize that he's the same guy as last year I'm going to feel better about this bullpen so I still think to win the World Series Dodgers need another ace level starter it's a good point I mean the bullpen it, it kind of already has built-in trades along the way because you have Maybe Blake trying it at some point in time, but you have um, uh, Dan Hudson. Maybe you have a Jimmy Nelson. Maybe you have a JP Fire Eyes, and maybe you have a Walker Bueller yeah, by exactly. September. Like there's there's a lot of upside there, but like right now, one or two guys get hurt in September. Woof. I mean, not September. The other one, the one that's coming up, April. Woof. Yeah. And also, too, <laughs> man, so far ahead. He's, they got the months are all wrong. April and September. What you, know, like you know about planning my October vacation <laughs> that was already? Like, Damn, bro. <laughs> I mean, look, I mean, I think I, I, I to me, the, the the fear I get, the way they can play the matchups from a bullpen standpoint, get get guys in situations where they know they can have success. I trust them to do that from a position card standpoint, from not being able to use the shifts. And we know the Dodgers shifting close to 40 percent of the time. They did it better than any team in the league. They were in the conversation of one of the best teams. Not going to have that benefit this year. Yeah. But I also think. You can find guys. You can develop guys. There's still a lot of talent in this organization. I look at this outfield, and other than Mookie, the reality here is this, Clint. Other than Mookie Betts, he's the only guy, even with James Albin, who we support and we want to be have success, and David Peralta and some of these other guys. Mookie Betts is the only guy you can trust to be an above-average bat out of six outfielders. I mean, just think about what we're yeah. saying here. So to me, I think the outfield, yeah. it, at the beginning of the season, I'm looking at run production. Last year, they left a lot to be desired. And even a Joey Gallo, a guy they brought on, right? <laughs> Joey Gallo, at least they knew he could give you pop off the bench, and that was the goal. Joey. Whereas Jason Hayward... <laughs> at his best day is not going to be doing no that. no there's just uh, man, the outfields talking rough. myself into a 60 win seat. no i'm just kidding I'm again just the I'm more just you actually start playing. like really breaking it all down there's just so many like oh yeah th if this guy if this guy if the, there's a lot, a lot of, of ifs. ifs there's so many ifs this is a season of ifs like, you know, i'm all for it because i do believe that if things don't go well Andrew Friedman's can go out there and find a way to fix it because that's what he does. And they have some talent. And, you know, I'm sorry. He's a good friend of yours. The Diego Cartaya could find himself a new job at some point if they feel like they have the opportunity to win a World Series this He'll year. He'll land on his feet. But um, that was our preview show, <laughs> guys. We appreciate you hanging out with us. Great show. Sorry for, um, oh I guess, making it so drab and, and downtrodden, if that's the word, if those are the words I'm looking uh -huh. for. It's just, it, there's, there's questions. There's concerns. And, hey, our and responsibility is objectivity, right? Hey, yeah, that's fair. And you know what makes it, though? It makes it a lot funner for uh, a lot more fun for people like us who cover this team to have things to uh, speak down upon because it's honestly boring covering an 111 win, 111 win team. So be ready for all of the angry DN post games you guys can handle because that comes back next week. We're going to be here probably doing Blue Heavens twice a week through the regular season. You got something? Fire take. Fire take. We, Fire got, a lot take. Of, we got a lot of fun stuff. We got, we got the office set up. We got the table here that everybody loves. We got Noah to do things. We got some fire new stuff from that fool Neil. Uh, make sure you guys are following all of them at Noise by Noel. You got at Noah Camera. So this is going to be your fire boots on the ground for all of the Dodgers coverage and maybe some other teams. We don't want to talk about that. But 
subscribe guys. I haven't told you to do that yet. Dodgersnation.com is a place you want to be. YouTube TV is a place you want to be. YouTube.com says Dodgers Nation TV is the spot you want to. I don't understand what's happening here. I don't know. Are you guys being. I don't know. Oh, no. The, 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 uh, Caprio, DiCaprio. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. the, the cheers. Guys, we appreciate you as always. We're going to be back on Monday and we're going to be talking more about your Dodgers. And uh, I think we're going to have a look around the league. We have another season preview coming up with a special guest in studio before opening day, but keep it tuned here all season long. We are here. We are ready to talk baseball until um, well, we all cry about it. Thank you to Cody running the board as always. Hey, it was a clean show today. We didn't have anything catch on fire. It was pretty good. The cameras stayed on. Whoop, whoop. Mid-season. Look, we are postseason ready. Let's go. I'm real FRG on Twitter <laughs> and Instagram. That guy is DMAC underscore LA on Twitter and Instagram. Go follow us for uh, whatever reason, and we will see you on the other side. <laughs>